This is Take Back Our Power with host Joy Bina. Information that supports community health. Information empowering you with personal health. Take back our power. And now, here's Joy. Today, we're discussing a topic of social justice, homelessness. People experiencing homelessness face violations of a wide range of human rights. Access to safe and secure housing is one of the most basic human rights. Homelessness is not just about housing. Homelessness is about lack of connectedness with family, friends, and the community, and lack of control over one's environment. Persons who are homeless often face violations of the right to an adequate standard of living, the right to education, the right to liberty and security, the right to privacy, the right to social security, the right to freedom from discrimination, the right to vote, and here in Santa Cruz, the very basic right to sleep. Since Homeless Family Services locked its gate due to lack of funding, their available beds are now empty. No places to sleep in Santa Cruz. No emergency beds available. This city has shelter for the tiniest percentage of its homeless, yet it's illegal to sleep in the streets of Santa Cruz. In the Ninth Circuit Court decision, the Department of Justice struck down a vagrancy law in Los Angeles, saying it's unconstitutional to punish people for sleeping outside if there aren't enough beds for them to sleep indoors. The federal government and the Department of Justice have continued to make their voice known on this issue. Regarding Bell versus Boise, the Attorney General of the United States stated, if a person has nowhere to go to sleep, then enforcement of anti-camping ordinances against that person criminalizes her for simply being homeless and constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. The attorney further stated, punishing conduct that is universal and an unavoidable consequence of being human violates the Eighth Amendment protections against cruel and unusual punishment, making them unconstitutional. It's a foregone conclusion that human life requires certain acts, and among them, sleeping. The lawyer for the Department of Justice continues, it's also easier for elected officials to argue for criminal penalties when the public costs of that policy are much harder to see than the costs of investing in shelters or services for the poor. Ultimately, though, advocates and the federal government have argued it's more expensive to ticket the homeless with court prison and health costs associated with that than to invest in housing first solutions that have worked in many parts of the country. Unemployment is the number one cause of homelessness. 82% of all homeless in Santa Cruz are homegrown people. People who have been residents of Santa Cruz and because of economic difficulty, have become homeless. These are not people that are moving through and absorbing services. These are our neighbors. There are people who believe that we can solve our homeless problems by cutting services to the homeless. Homelessness won't disappear with tickets and citations. 42% of arrests and 32% of all citations are for homeless people. The consequences of sleeping in the streets is receiving tickets and citations, which is a dire consequence to the homeless population. Criminal citations compound the problem by making it harder for people to qualify for jobs or housing in the future. 
You know, at its very heart, homelessness is about the ways in which more economically privileged citizens relate to the most vulnerable people in our communities. The questions we must ask ourselves about homelessness is, do we feel a sense of personal responsibility or do we see it as someone else's problem? Do our values compel us to act when we see people living on the streets or do we uncomfortably turn our heads? Do we harbor stereotypes about the homeless or do we truly believe that everyone deserves shelter? This is an issue of conscience. The homeless who walk among us are painful reminders that we are failing on a wide variety of social and moral issues. You know, it's one of the first moral contradictions that many children notice as they walk down the sidewalks of America and their parents panic for an explanation as to why in the richest country on earth people have to sleep on the streets. Though in our community, sleeping on the streets is also a crime. The time has come here in Santa Cruz County that as privileged citizens, we must accept some responsibility for those suffering in our midst. Hi, I'm Joy Bina, and today on Take Back Our Power, we are discussing this controversial subject of homelessness with two clergy members who are intimately involved with this marginalized part of our human family. Rabbi Philip Posner has been a congregational rabbi for nearly 40 years. He's always been active in social action and interfaith activities. In 1961, Rabbi Posner joined the Freedom Rides, helping to integrate transportation facilities. And he served 39 days time in Parchman Penitentiary in Mississippi. Rabbi Posner participated in social action missions to El Salvador and Ethiopia and was the co-founder of the Rabbinic Network for Ethiopian Jewelry, which successfully challenged his fellow rabbis to help Ethiopian Jews get to Israel. Patrick Tiverbau is a priest at the Santa Cruz Zen Center since 1999, coordinator of this global Sangha, a group of Zen practitioners working in areas of social action for the last nine years. The Sangha provides a weekly lunch for the Homeless Garden Project and the River Street Shelter. The Global Sangha members provide support at the Santa Cruz County Jail for inmates. And the center runs a weekly recovery group and participates in the annual Gay Pride Parade. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. And thanks for taking the time to be with us today on Take Back Our Power. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. So in a city that prides itself uh, as being liberal and progressive, how is it that we have continued to support the criminalization of the homeless? Patrick, can you speak to that? Well, I think we all have a tendency to turn away from uh, difficulty and we at Santa Cruz Zen Center really like to practice looking at places that we have forgotten and we like to encourage other congregations in Santa Cruz, other private citizens in Santa Cruz to just turn a little bit towards uh, our neighbors that we haven't yet met and see if we can't get closer, if we can't uh, uh, together as a community look at some of the difficulties and the suffering that is uh, 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 part of our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think it's, it's the core problem is uh, uh, we like to turn away from difficulty. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes as an institution, we criminalize this. Um, and I think that's where some of the laws of uh, um, the camping prohibitions come out of, uh, maybe we can help keep this continually hidden 
if, uh, if we can shoo people away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really would encourage other people in the community, other organizations in the community to, uh, to uh, reveal these areas of the community that really need help and support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always fascinating to me that we're all so concerned mm -hmm. about social issues in our country and in the world, and yet right under our noses there is such suffering, and we have supported laws that further that suffering. Tell us. Robert. Well, you know, uh, last week was Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and throughout Reform synagogues in the United States, the Torah portion that we read Leviticus 19 includes the commandment, you should treat the stranger as the homeborn, for you were strangers in Egypt. So there's just no doubt that, you know, what, what is happening in Santa Cruz is a long continuum of basic xenophobia, people who are afraid of the stranger and the unknown. And so the commandment to, to consider the homeless as part of your community is terribly powerful. And uh, if you ask why is it that Santa Cruz, which is a progressive community, you know, uh, has this kind of prejudice, bigotry against homelessness, it's xenophobic, but it's also a political reality that some of the members of the city council, not my son, obviously, uh, but some of the members of the city council have taken the attitude that they're going to uh, throw in their lot with the, the real estate interests that want to emphasize uh, properties over human lives. Exactly. So I think it's a combination of xenophobia and economic uh, realities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because Thank that's really the bottom line right. issue is valuing economics over the Which value right. of human life. And I'm not saying that they all feel that way and in all fairness I'm not saying that even the more conservative members, that that's an absolute reality. So we hope, we're hoping we can win them over mm -hmm. to uh, doing something uh, effectively mm -hmm. to provide more shelter. Mm -hmm. But they're acting as if that is the truth. Some of them, yes. Yes. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. And so would you consider it a moral obligation to protect the homeless, Patrick? I would really like to approach uh, this uh, issue of morality as uh, the idea that um, it's immoral to look at someone else as a complete stranger, as someone that's completely different from, uh, from me, and, uh, and try to promote more community, more intimacy between people. And, uh, and in that sense, when we, when we criminalize one part of our community, um, we do increase that separation between all of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, w we might look at that as uh, uh, immorality in, in, the, in the Buddhist sense. Um, I was just at the Food Not Bombs lunch yesterday and uh, uh, started talking with a homeless person about cornbread recipes mm -hmm. and it's just so clear mm -hmm. that we all want the same things in life. We all want to be happy. We all want to be liberated from our suffering. And it was so nice you know, just, to, just to talk shop about mm -hmm. uh, cooking and community and uh, sitting down uh, to a meal together. And uh, this, is, this is what I mean by intimacy in a community. And when we promote the separation, uh, that causes more and more suffering. Yes. You know, and I should mention that the Zen Center contributes a meal once a month mm -hmm. to Food Not Bombs. Yeah. Yeah, that's been, that's been a lot of Which fun. Which is a wonderful addition, yeah, and yeah. we would love it if other organizations would take it upon themselves to contribute on Sundays. We don't have a kitchen on Sundays to cook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, India Joe's, Joseph Schultz, 
when we lost our kitchen due to remodeling, uh, made available his restaurant mm -hmm. for us to cook in. Yes, it's been great. So Saturdays, the volunteers go to India Joe's and use his kitchen and prepare a meal for Saturdays. But we don't have a space for Sundays. And it would be wonderful if other organizations such as yours would step up and bring a meal on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. They've it's, been it's been a lot of fun. Good, good. Yes, yeah, so um, where is, is the compa compassion in our city? You know, I, I feel like uh, people don't see them as human. And as you said, going to the Food Not Bombs meal and striking up a conversation with one of the homeless, familiarizing yourself with his humanness, you realize that you're not different. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. We're just people. And here we have this population suffering in our midst, and instead of supporting them, we have created laws that make it criminal to sleep. So one can imagine a homeless person, you know, one can imagine somebody losing their home because of economic hardship. You know, 2007, 2008 crash, a lot of people became homeless in this town. So not only did they lose their homes and their jobs, but they don't know where they're going to get their next meal. They don't know where they're going to now shower since the Family Services Center is closed and they don't know where they're going to sleep. And if they do find a spot, it's likely that a police officer will come with his flashlight in their eyes and uh, wake them up more than once in the night. And so you add sleep deprivation to that mix. And it doesn't take long for one's neighbor to look like a pretty crazy person. I certainly would. Rabbi? Joy, at, at, at the risk of disagreeing with you a little bit, I think that there are differences between uh, people. At the core, absolutely, every human being has the commonality of wanting to be treated as a, as a human being yes. and not suffer. But w what I've learned from doing Food Not Bombs and you know sleeping in at City Hall and all the stuff that's been going on is people are different. I don't care if they're different. The city and government has a responsibility because they're the government to care for people whether they're different or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really an important thing for us to say to you know, our government leaders. Mm -hmm. These are people for who for a variety of reasons, including drugs, etc., some of whom have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Tough. They're human beings and government has to respond to their suffering. Exactly. And we're facing, we, I think you know that mm -hmm. the other day we ran a uh, half-page ad in the newspaper that is a homeless shelter depot yes. and the uh, Action Religious Community. We ran an ad pointing out that there's a rising anxi anxiety over El Nino, mm -hmm. uh, as reported in the Sentinel the other day. Mm -hmm. We're facing possibly really terrible weather, and there's thousands of people who are going to have no shelter. It's unacceptable. Yeah, over 3,000 people right. of hom homeless people in Santa Cruz. So over people are different. So what? Yeah. But at the core. At the core, absolutely. We are all right. human. We're, We're all part human. of right. the same right. human right. family. Right. We all, we all, many of us like cornbread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell us what's going on with the freedom sleepers. What what is happening there, and what is it in reaction to? Well, uh, you want the origin of it, or just what's happening well, right now? Well, you know, it, it, the origin would be good. Yes. So about <laughs> two months ago, Abby Keith and I, food not bombs, or Abby and I, really were were talking about the reality of the situation. And I had just written... Abby Samuels. Yeah, thanks for... Yeah. So I had just written a piece called uh, Sooner Than Later, meaning that we were going to have to confront the city about the homeless situation and take some, some action. So that produced a discussion, and that led to an organization of people, uh, Robert uh, and Steve, Robert uh, Norris and Steve Pleitch and I and Abby and eventually Keith, et cetera. And we began a process of get, bringing people together. 
which was uh, uh, originally called uh, home, Homeless, what's the, anyway, we changed the name to Freedom Sleepers uh, over, I, in a way I objected to it because uh, I didn't like, I just think it sounds a little strange, but that, the majority wanted Freedom Sleepers, so that's what we have. So, and I have to admit I was honored because they were in part doing this because I was a freedom writer. So we've been sleeping in at City Hall, I think we now slept in 10 times, protesting the fact that people don't have a place to sleep. And so mm -hmm. we chose City Hall as a site to do that. Yeah. It's not been fun. Yeah. Uh, and lately the police, the authorities have been uh, a little tough on us. Uh, and some of it has just been uh, uh, harassment, pure and simple. Mm -hmm. But uh, the group, so far as continuing to hang in there. Mm -hmm. And you're experiencing what it's like to have a sleepless night. Yeah, because we do get our light, flashlight, you know, well, first of all, the noise and the flashlights and, and the tension that homeless people probably feel, knowing that they may be woken up at any time, the insecurity of not getting enough sleep, uh, the reality of sometimes not having food, mm -hmm. and also the city, as you probably know, uh, the the uh, city manager was asked to have, I think, two or three bathrooms open all night. I think there's only one open, so we have to get up. And although lately we've had a porta potty, but place. But uh, for eight of the times we didn't have any place, so we had to get up and go find a place to pee. And uh, one of the things that I found just so overwhelmingly sad was one day a couple of ladies and I went to the one place that was open to go to the bathroom, and they came out white. Uh, with indignation because on one of the toilet seats there was a lady sleeping because oh she had no god. place to sleep. Oh my god. So I was just so so struck by the the reality of that and that in the United States of America as you say in the supposedly progressive town of Santa Cruz we have we have no place for people to sleep so some people have to go sleep in bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So I'm hoping that doing this show is uh, striking a chord in your heart and you will pay attention to the fact that this situation does in fact exist among us and you'll search your heart and wonder what it is you can do to affect change. And Patrick, I know your organization, as we mentioned, you know, once a month brings a meal to Food Not Bombs and once a week your organization provides lunch and maybe you can make a statement about how, how you see other people contributing in that way. Well, I think uh, faith-based organizations uh, really are in a good position to uh, reach out, be supportive, and change, uh, change some minds. All faith-based traditions uh, are big-hearted. Compassion uh, is a big part of uh, all, all faith-based practices. And it really is time to get off of the cushion and get into the streets, get off of the pews and get into the streets. And um, with the traditional resources of churches and temples, uh, um, a lot can be done. Um, most churches and temples have buildings that could be uh, offered for shelter. And in Santa Cruz and Monterey, I know there's been there's been uh, church shelters uh, over the years, and, and uh, we might look at that. Uh, some churches and temples have a little extra money that can be used. Uh, uh, lots of the funding on the Coral Street Center has, has been uh, pulled back, and uh, so certainly... There are no uh, showers available uh, anymore, no meals available for so the bulk of that population. So there's certainly places that donations could be made mm -hmm. to uh, offer support and, uh, and more shelter. And then churches and temples uh, have all of the congregations and sanghas uh, with their big-hearted practices uh, that can go out and uh, cook meals, uh, can uh, take people to doctor's appointments. Um, this is, this is a, a real opportunity to turn your compassion practice into activity. This is where God is love is manifest when you actually uh, are out there uh, okay. supporting and helping people. This is where the unity of the whole universe 
can be manifested when, when we can uh, meet each other and support each other. And so these are the traditional resources of most faith-based faith communities that can really be helpful and supportive mm -hmm. and change people's minds mm -hmm. and change people's lives. Mm -hmm. And those of us who do this know that nothing feels better. Nothing feels better. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very rewarding. Very and, rewarding. And, creates community. And, and feels like home. It feels like this is how we should be mm -hmm. with each other. Exactly. This is uh, where we're meant to walk side by side. We're meant to live side by side. We're meant to share meals with each other. Um, and uh, this is, uh, it feels like coming home yeah. when you uh, are doing supportive community work. Yeah. And one can only imagine what it would be like in Santa Cruz if we took care of this. Mm -hmm. The community feeling that it would create. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and how we're going to feel when those storms come and we're not caring. Exactly. So, people. Rabbi, so, tell us more. So, in we addition, have a few minutes left. In addition to the things that Patrick talked about and that yeah. people can do, because uh, there's so many, there are so many people who are doing wonderful things. You know, yeah. I mean, it's still a pretty wonderful community, Santa Cruz. Yeah. Uh, there is a petition that we've mentioned in our newspaper ad yesterday, that's uh, on uh, on Move On, and it's called the the Common Ground Homeless Petition. So uh, Steve and I are the authors of it, so people can go online to moveon.com and sign our petition. And most important of all... And they, we have the link right here for you. Oh, great. Okay. Yep. And most important of all, people can show up at City Council on November 24th. Most important of all. And, and demonstrate that that we got to do something about That's this. Right. That it's November unacceptable. 24th November 24th at City, City Council. Council. Micah will have, my son Micah will have a proposal that's coming before the council mm -hmm. that uh, with Mayor Don uh, and people can support that. They can also call. It's really important if they feel uh, inspired about this issue, they can call City Council at 420-5020 and thank Micah and Mayor Don for their support and encourage Cynthia Chase, Rochelle Noroyan, and Pamela Comstock and the others to, to get in line with this yeah. and do something, because otherwise I think they're going to feel pretty sad too. They're, they're, listen, they're people too, that are council people. They gotta, when this storm comes, I can't believe they're not going to feel badly knowing that so many people are suffering out there because mm -hmm. of the bad weather. Because the truth is at this moment it's definitely not a sure thing. In order for this to pass, the city council has to feel the community's right, right support. Right now it's an uphill battle. We it's need, an uphill we need battle, two so more we councils. need the presence right. of our community at the city council right. meeting, making these phone calls, signing the petition, in order to provide shelter for Absolutamente. the needy. Yes. Well, you know, I so appreciate both of you joining me today and discussing this very important subject of uh, a portion of our human family, of our fellow citizens in Santa Cruz that are suffering terribly. So thank you so much for all the time and energy you give to this marginalized population, all the service work you both do in your lives, and for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.